My name is Sarah. I'm a 22-year-old psychology student at the University of Groningen. Besides studying, I do two, two jobs. I am a residential group supervisor in the north of the Netherlands, and I'm a student mentor in the university itself for first-year students. I teach them academical skills and research methods. Two great jobs, and it gives me a great opportunity to help people in positions other people usually don't tell you options and things that you are actually able to do. And I'm going to do and tell you a bit more about this, but I have a very original question for you. Even though I don't see you, I would like to close your eyes for a sec. I see everything, so close your eyes. <laughs> and imagine a way in how your country, or city perhaps, someone goes to university. What path do they have to take? How does it happen in your country or city? Think about it. In the Netherlands, it's determined by a test you take in primary school. Then you do a conversation with your teacher that has a certain knowledge, and you can get a confirmation about a certain level you do to go to middle school, and then perhaps, if it's in the, in the situation, to go to university. In my case, it went a little bit different. When I had hopes to go to university, my teacher had a different plan and a different idea of what I should do. I wasn't able, or <laughs> not in an opportunity or the possibility, to actually go to university in her case. So getting news like that is great. Such a cute package, great idea. So amazing, right? Nah, it, it hit hard. <laughs> if you have hopes and want to do something differently and it doesn't happen that way, then how would you then work out through those things? <laughs> Hi. In my case, it went differently. How I wanted to go to university and wanted to do certain things, but people having different plans for me and having me to follow it, sucks. I, wanted, I was so sure and I wanted to go to university, but it just didn't go that way. And things like that and news like that already put you down, like zero one. What should I do? And is this actually what I'm supposed to do or having to go through it? You're young, you're like 11 or something, so you don't think about it twice and just do it. It makes you feel misunderstood, especially when you want to achieve something and you keep telling it. And at some point, even dumb or invisible. <sighs> yeah. One day it was different for me. I was done with it. Listening to everyone's advice and everyone being so certain about what you should do with your life and how you should handle or treat it is great and everything, but if I am telling you that I'm very sure that it should go differently, why, why do we continually treat me like that? And then one day I had enough of it. I didn't in my light chat. What did I do? I went to my mentor at that time, in the fourth year of FAMBO, which is the last year of it in middle school. I told her, I am so sure I understand everything, but I don't know how to represent it in my tests. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. And I asked her politely, but you know, demanding a little bit, like, take me serious, but you know. She finally did. And we made a test and did a test and everything. Turns out I had dyslexia. And then <laughs> I was like, OK, what now? <laughs> it gave me opportunities. I got uh, more time at tests and uh, opportunities and things to try to do my tests differently. And for, some, for a sec, I felt like, look, I wasn't so dumb, or I wasn't like my teacher said I was, right? I thought so. And then years pass on, you know, I try my best and I didn't give up. I didn't dim my light yet, I went on. And I then did Hafo and then Fabio. But then another problem comes running after me and it keeps bugging me as well. I can't focus. I don't know, I don't know how to handle all the amount of work that's been given to me, 
my head, my head keeps running through my things every time, like, oh, look at that, that white wall is much more important than your books every time. It's like, okay, what's going on? And years keep on passing and the problem keeps increasing and then you're at a certain level like, okay, what should I do right now? I got so stressed and <laughs> it, I had so many ups but also a lot of downs, which at some point made me think, was my teacher right? I got a burnout even, guys. It, it, it was a lot. I didn't know, I thought, okay, I think, I'm, I think she's right. But I'm like, okay, maybe she is, but let's finish what we have right now. I got my certificates instead of my diploma at Favio because I was not ready and I wasn't in a great place. But then I had a moment, I had dyslexia literally like three years ago, apparently. It turns out like, boop, dyslexia. <laughs> what now? <laughs> What's going on? We gave myself another chance. It's like, okay, Sarah, we're not going to give up. So we went on and did Habio, Applied University, for those who are interested in the name. And because I had a burnout, a lot of tests, I kept failing, failing, failing. I was like, okay. No one even talked to me about it. I said, hey, Sarah, maybe there's something, you know, not right. No, instead, I was like, okay. I look in my mirror and I was like, Sarah, what's going on? <laughs> How are we going to figure this situation out, situation out? I went to my mentor, and then we had a conversation. He sent me off to a coach that sent me off to a psychologist. At that time, like, I was how much, 20 years old. Turned out I had ADHD. And as we say in Dutch, then the quarter fell. <laughs> it was. Because it was literally like an aha moment. Like, okay, makes sense. Okay, yeah. And now? Oh, okay, yeah. Um, changed life. <laughs> no. Uh, what she said was to look at the things differently. It's still achievable to reach for what I want to do, but it's going to be different. And it's going to take some time, and you have to do things not the way you want it, maybe. When you are younger, and get told, like it's supposed to happen in primary school, that you have ADHD or dyslexia, then it's much easier to treat those things and even be helped throughout life and know how to figure things out. In my case, I was 20, and just figuring out having ADHD is a whole other world. How to work out the things I have and how to learn, how to focus, how to schedule, in my case, I kept making lists because if it wasn't in my schedule, sorry, but I couldn't come to the meeting because I'd already have forgotten about it. And I've been teaching myself it and knowing that like 20% of the people who have ADHD also have dyslexia, you know, you, you find people that are similar to you. You know, okay, how did you do that? And how did you do this? And then you learn certain goals or doors or ways and paths that no one tells you about. Like, how it was able to do this, or how there are some products that could help you throughout your studying. Yet no one told me. Never. It was like, okay, apparently Sarah's like that. It's like, okay, <laughs> gotta do it then like that. <laughs> but no, it wasn't actually for me. It was terrible. It's, you struggle, you're very alone struggling, and you think, okay, is this so dumb for me that I keep trying? Should I just quit right then and there because my teacher had actually the best advice already given to me? Or is there another way around? How should we do this? What is expected from me? But, you know, we, get, we don't give up. And we go further. And thankfully, you know, here I am, actually. I'm finally at university. Second year university, and it took so much time crying, <laughs> crying. <laughs> studying and isolation, especially with corona, by the way. But it was a lot, and it kept going and going, but I told you about that light that we didn't dim yet. It's because we kept going on, even though it had so many problems and so many difficult difficulties, it was just something that had to happen, I guess. Because how I always say things is, things in life are either a lesson or a blessing, and even the lessons in life can be a blessing. If all those annoying and terrible things didn't happen to me, I would never stand on this dot. If all those things never happened to me, I would never be a teacher, I would never be a residential group supervisor, I would never be a university student. I would never have stood here. And 
that's what I wanted to give to you. It's like how you look at things. Maybe you have an answer A and you have an answer B. But look for the answer C and D and keep going on because even though you're struggling, it still means that there are opportunities that, that you can do and take to achieve that certain goal. It definitely isn't impossible. If I had to go the long way and the long road like everyone would never have imagined me to, I'd still have been able to finish what I wanted to. But no one tells you about it. Why? Because no one expects you to look for them. And that's really weird because you wanted to be given that opportunity. I mean, you matter, and you matter, everyone matters. The reason I didn't show my face as well is because this story hasn't, has, doesn't have to be my story. It could be yours, your neighbors, your friends. Everyone could have been through something like this and still known or doesn't even know that they had, didn't have a given an opportunity they were actually supposed to get. You matter. Why wouldn't you? You deserve that chance. Why shouldn't you? You are that person that deserves to be looked upon and take, not been taken for granted right from the second you were there. Why wouldn't you be treated differently? It's not how it should be. And being a teacher right now to first-year students, telling them, or them telling me, Sarah, I don't know how to figure this out. I think I'm failing and everything. It's like, don't you even realize how you got through this school? There's a certain test you have to take. There, there's, don't you see the papers you've already finished and ever actually have done very well? Don't look at that one certain thing and think, oh, I'm messing up life and it's going terribly. Why? It's not even necessary because you've been doing so much success. How to how you even like achieve a certain job or achieve to be a, to, to be a boyfriend or a girlfriend even. That's a lot of effort. I mean, that doesn't take for a sec. <laughs> yeah. So why underestimate yourself? Why look at yourself like that? It doesn't. It isn't easy to hand it to you that there are ten options for you but it doesn't mean that they aren't there. And I want you to look at what you actually wanted in your life and think, okay, this option didn't fit me, but is there another option? Is there another solution I can try or at least look at or ask about? Because there isn't one way. And that's what I want you to look up and believe in yourself in. My name is Sarah Khalil, and I would like you to give yourself a chance. Thank you very much.